Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Matthews, and you're on the module dealing with the atmosphere, air, and water. Do you recognize that? That's your home and mine. That's planet Earth. Can you find where you are? Where are you? Two interesting things to note from a picture of the Earth. One is the clouds. Notice all the white. It covers much of the planet. But number two, what's the predominant color and why? It's blue. That's because 70% of our Earth surface is covered in water. So if you were to drop out of the sky any random place on the Earth in the atmosphere, 7 out of 10 times you would land in water. So most of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Water also is present in our atmosphere. That's what creates the clouds. So we'll talk about that as well. What are the three forms that water can take on planet Earth? One, it can come if it's cold as a solid or ice. Two, it can come as a liquid or water. And three, it can come as a gas or steam or vapor. So if you have an ice cube and you melted it, it would become water and eventually it would become gas. Water is very unique on the Earth in this way because it is the only known thing that we know on Earth that comes in all three forms of solid liquid gas. If water were located on Pluto, it would only come as a solid, ice. If other things on, say, Pluto was on Earth, it might come in three different forms. So that makes water very unique, the fact that it's present on Earth and the fact that it comes in all three forms. What about the air that we breathe? If you ask most people what makes up the air, they would give you the answer, oxygen. Well, that's true, but that's not the biggest piece of the pie. It's actually 20% of the pie, or one-fifth. The other four-fifths, just about, are made up of something called nitrogen. Okay, let me stop for a moment and tell you that if you invite me to your school, boy, do I have a cool experiment involving nitrogen. Because... Nitrogen on Earth comes as a gas because of our temperature and climate. We breathe it all the time. However, if you could cool down nitrogen, bring it into a laboratory and make it extremely cold, like 300 degrees below zero, it becomes a liquid, not water. Just because it becomes a liquid doesn't make it water. There are a lot of liquids that are not water. And so, nitrogen, if you get it cold enough, doesn't become a solid, it becomes a liquid. And I can show you that experiment if you invite me to your class. Something to think about and look forward to. Meanwhile, 78% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. 20% is oxygen. Argon makes up about 1%. Water vapor makes up about 1%. And then carbon dioxide, which we need to live, but not too much so that we don't fry, only makes up about three one-hundredths of the atmosphere. Hey, I bet you recognize this chart. It's the water cycle. So let's go through this. First, under the ground or in lakes and oceans, you have accumulation. That's where the water accumulates on the planet to be used. On bodies of water or from the trees themselves, they transpirate and evaporate. So the moisture goes from a liquid to a gas into our atmosphere. If that air rises enough, it condensates and forms clouds. And then if it has enough moisture in the clouds, it precipitates back down into the groundwater or the lakes and oceans and completes the process. Okay, it's time for your quiz. Are you ready? Here we go. The atmosphere, air, and water quiz. Number one. What percent of the Earth's surface is made of water? Number two, what makes water unique on the Earth? You can think of two things. And number three, if the air itself were heavier, what would happen to you and me and to water? We'll give you a moment to think about those and come back with your answer. Okay, here we go. Question number one. What percent of the Earth's surface is made of water? 
Remember I mentioned seven out of ten times if you fell from a balloon, you'd land in water. What makes the water unique? Two things. One, that we've only found it here on Earth, that it exists. And two, that it comes in all three forms, solid, liquid, and gas. Think about if the air were much heavier. How would that affect you and me and weather? One, it would make the air very difficult to move through, so you would feel resistance against you as you move. And in terms of precipitation, much like on Venus, if the air were much heavier, the precipitation would have a much harder time falling through it, so it would fall either slower or might even be suspended in the air. So that's your quiz on the atmosphere, air, and water. Now it's time for a brief demonstration. Hello and welcome to this demonstration which has to do with how clouds form. We've talked in the modules about the condensation cycle, the water cycle. All we'll need for this experiment is a lamp with a bulb that we can turn on and a little curly cue. Let me explain the curly cue. All it is is a piece of paper that I've cut into a circle just an ordinary piece of paper. I've cut it into a circle and then I've made it into a curly cue by creating a spiral cutout pattern around and around it. At the end I've taped to it a piece of thread and then I've glued it to a hanger. The purpose of the thread and the hanger is so that I can hold it up without actually touching it that way you know I'm not influencing it and I can hold it as long as I need to above me so that you can watch what happens when I turn on the lamp. The purpose of the lamp is to create heat. The light bulb will act as the sun. So the light bulb gives off light and heat in the same way that the sun does. The heat from the light bulb goes in all directions, but I'm going to place the curly cue above it so that you can see that even though it's not touching the light bulb, the light bulb is heating the air above it, which causes that air to be warmer than the air up here, and causes the warmer air to then rise until it cools off to the point where it's the same temperature as its surroundings and doesn't need to rise anymore. But in order to prove that there's hot air above the bulb and that it's rising, I'm going to use the curly cue, and you're going to watch what happens. So we turn on the light. Oh, there's some light and heat there. We take the curly cue and we put it above the light bulb. And then we watch what happens as the light bulb heats the air. Look at that. Can you see what's happening to the curly cue? It is actually spinning in place. And that is because the heat from the top of the light bulb is going through where I cut out the curly cue and forcing the air upwards which causes the curly cue to therefore rotate. Now if you can picture this in the atmosphere I have a bottle of spray water. The atmosphere always has some water in it but when it evaporates part of the water cycle the water in very tiny droplets ooh, begins to warm up in the daytime heating from the sun rises and then cools and condenses to form clouds. There you go. And when the cloud becomes heavy enough with moisture, if it does, it then precipitates and completes the water cycle. So that's your explanation for how and why clouds form. I hope you enjoyed it.